Hey, we're standing here next to an Emerson Branningham Big 420. And even though this tractor looks huge, it's actually small compared to its big brother, the Big 430, which you can hear running in the background. But uh, these were a pretty innovative tractor design uh, because if you stop and think about 1913 or 1914, uh, there, were, there were tons of different uh, uh, variations of design and, and things like that. This is actually an inline four-cylinder engine and, and a conventional tractor design, which you would see later, you know, in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and all the way up to today. Uh, this is what a tractor was really kind of supposed to start looking like. And this was designed by a designer uh, named Hartso. His last name was Hartso. And, you know, he designed something like this. And then even later, he went on to design tractors like the Big Bull, which was just a terrible design. So they didn't even know that they had it right uh, initially, but they did. This is one of the original four-cylinder uh, conventional designs. Uh, you can see it's it's an inline four-cylinder, which tractor design uh, you know later became kind of a standard. Uh, but this you know we're talking about 1914, 1915 on this, so this was really really revolutionary. And there were still tractors being produced that had cross motors and two-cylinder opposed, and you know all the crazy designs. But uses a Bennett carburetor and a big uh, KW high bar mag. These are actually inspection plates that you could pull off and you could look in and, and see the rods and the, and the crankshaft. This had a unique design on the, uh, on the rods uh, where as opposed to a standard rod cap, it had a wedge that went on, on either side and you actually turned a nut to tighten the wedge to tighten the, the uh, rod bearings and it actually says in the manual that you were supposed to check that like for with every 12 hours of operation. So, uh, you know, they, they were almost getting it right, but it was, it was right at the beginning. Uh, this particular tractor uh, was bought out of Montana by a collector in South Africa. It was shipped from Montana to South Africa, competed in several plowing matches there. It was then shipped to England and Ireland to compete in plowing matches. And now he's shipped it back to the United States because he said he wanted the tractor to come home again. Uh, but that's all taken place in about 20 years. So this thing has tens of thousands of miles on it. It's probably the most high mileage Emerson Branningham on the planet. <laughs> you know, this is, is kind of a standardized operating platform, which we're used to now. But I, I just have to stress to you how revolutionary this was in, in 1914 or 15, because this was a radical new design. There were still uh, tractors being produced, you know, that you had to stand up on to drive. Um, these came out, when these came out, uh, it was an option to have a plow lift. And you can see the pedal up there that says plow lift. Uh, you would hit that and it would have a big cam on the rear axle and it would actually lift a three or four bottom plow up out of the ground. So that was even revolutionary. I mean, that was a, that was a modern tractor design. Um, you know, I, I, I've got one of these in my own collection and I was lucky enough to find the, the hired man on the farm where my tractor came from and he remembered using this tractor in the field. And uh, his, his most poignant memory was the neighbor across the fence had a Fordson and a two bottom plow and he had this tractor and a four bottom plow and he said the neighbor would get done before he did because it took him so long to turn around. This has got about a 40 foot turning radius, you know. So, but it's a big tractor, uh, pretty exciting to drive. Uh, they, they, they actually handle well. Uh, Emerson was an Illinois company, so that's always what's draw, drawn my interest to it, but uh, really, really great tractor.